Mm. Then he says, stand firm in the faith. Now, there's a lot of application to this because standing firm in the faith doesn't mean like if somebody tries to come in here and say this doctrine, we're sticking it to them. That might be part of it. But the idea of standing firm in the faith is the idea that you're, you're standing firm, you're sticking to the faith. You're staying where the faith is. You're not moving away from the faith. You're not doubting the faith. What's the faith? The faith is that God is good. The faith is that he saved us, that he called us, that he has a plan for us, that he's working, right? We, we could turn to a million verses for each one of those tenets, but standing firm in the, in the faith isn't just rejecting bad doctrine. It's making sure that every moment of my life, I'm continuing to appropriate what God says is true. I've said this before. I and the Bible endorse that there is a time to work through things, right? The evening of tears gives birth to the morning of joy. Over and over again, we see examples. Jesus is in the garden, and it says he was troubled. Literally Greek, he was, he was depressed when he's in the garden of Gethsemane, and he's waiting to be crucified. And it was even Jesus who said, if there's any way, I mean, just, just think about this. Jesus, the Lord Jesus said, if we can have a different plan, Father, I want that plan. He said, if there's any way that this cup can pass for me, can we please do that? I don't want to drink this cup. I don't want to be separated from you. It's the man Jesus expressing his earthly will to what is about to happen. And he never sinned, and he is perfect. There are times where we can absolutely express to God, this is not the cup I wanted. I'm troubled by this. I don't know how to deal with this, but we can do that and we ought to do that in a way where we say, nevertheless, not your will or my will be done, but your will be done. We may not feel that way, but we still confess that because we're standing firm in the faith. It is just fine to wrestle with what is the will of God. It's just fine to wrestle with this broken world. It's just fine to wrestle with what people do to us and all that, that is, is perfectly acceptable. Where it gets off is where we turn inward and we lose your will be done and we instead just entertain, I don't like this. And that's where we spiral. And part, a big part of Christianity is not just being zapped by the Holy Spirit and being changed in a moment. That's great if it happens. But a big part of Christianity is every moment taking my thoughts captive. Every moment saying, that's inappropriate. That thought is sin. It's wrong. Every moment being real about where I'm exercising my will and my opinions from. Is it from my wisdom and this world's wisdom? Or is it from God's wisdom? So we are culpable. We're, we're responsible for how we respond to in, the, in those times. We're responsible for how we deal with what comes our way. We can deal with things and we can address things in a very godly way and still have doubt about it. Does that make sense? It's what Jesus did. It's what we can do. And so uh, back here in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 16, he says, we're to stand firm in our faith. We're to be courageous. Uh, courageous. Literally, and some of your English translations probably, this, probably have this, act like men. Probably the most toxic thing you can say today. It doesn't mean like, you know, scratch your crotch and spit in the woods or something. What it means is, the idea of act like men is have maturity in your strength. Be mature. Be courageous. Because see, a mature person denies impulse, right? That's what a mature person does. When a child gets something taken away from them, even if it's something bad, if you see your kid running around with a Tide Pod in their hand and they shove it in their mouth and you run over and go and clench their jaw and then pull the Tide Pod out and they start screaming and flailing and want to hit you, they're acting out of impulse, right? You just delivered them from an ER visit at best. But their response to that is you've wronged me and now I will pitch a perpetual fit about it until I just kind of burn out of my fit, right? So you would look at that, you say, that's childish. So when he says, be a man, he's not talking about weird ideas about masculinity. He's saying, be a mature individual. Have courage, have strength, 
to be able to take the things that occur in your life in a mature way. That when we have to deal with things that we don't like, that we deal with it with composure. That doesn't mean false faces or pretending like everything's okay, but we deal with it by standing in our faith. We deal with it the same way. Because that's what maturity does, right? When a mature person gets wronged, they stop and they think. And that is also a big part of Christianity. Our, our society moves at a million miles a minute, doesn't it? It's just rolling and rolling, and everybody's dealing and talking right now. And as soon as I have a feeling, I vocalize it. And as soon as this, then I vocalize it, and I can do it to the universe instantly. All these things. That's how our society is going. A big part of Christianity is rolling that back. In maturity, in evaluating what just happened. What did this person say to me? What did this person do to me? What is this, you know, this, this car accident I was involved in, something I was outside of my control? What, what happened? What does my faith say about that? Not what I say about that. Not what my feelings say about that. Not what my heart says about that. What does my faith say about that? Okay, now what does my heart say about that? How does that line up where my faith is? It's being contemplative. In Ephesians 5, Paul puts it this way. He says, walk circumspectly. Literally, walk looking in every direction. Walk with an understanding of all that's going around you. And so as Christians, that's what we're called to do. We're called not to react and you know, just unleash. We're called to consider. Half the Psalms, like in the middle of them, see us, pause and consider that. We're called not to respond out of a place of feelings and emotions. We have feelings and emotions, some of us, but we're not called to respond out of that place, right? We're called to respond out of our faith. We, can, we express our feelings. We express them to the Lord, just like Jesus did, just like David did. All these prophets of old expressed their feelings. But it was based on, or when it was appropriate, it was based on, this is what I'm feeling, but this is what I know to be true. And that's where we find healing. We don't find healing in just continually expressing feelings. Has anybody just expressed themselves to the point where they feel like, I don't ever want to express myself again? I'm so just full from expressing what I think. No. We get filled up from expressing what we think and then receiving what God says is true. And so that's part of being, standing our faith, it's part of being courageous, it's part of being adults, acting like men. Be strong. And he says, do everything in love. Again, that's just, it's another impossible application. But this is very cool, I think. This is how a good church works. This is how good relationships work. Again, going back to this idea that I'm being considerate. I'm evaluating where my own heart is. So I get in an argument with someone or someone does something to me, takes the last, you know, chicken strip from the line, you know, whatever it might be, right in front of me. And I want to react to that. But I don't react. I keep my mouth closed. And I don't let it spiral in my mind. And develop, oh, it's that chicken strip stealing. That person knew. And I had my eye on that chicken strip the whole time. They should have saw me staring at it and drooling. You know, whatever it might be. Because we can come up with some weird logic of why we're entitled to things that we're actually not, right? That we take a moment, we evaluate, we consider, where is this coming from? Is this from Jesus? And then when I respond to someone, to ask myself with every word, with everything that I'm doing, every action, is this an action or word that is going to propagate the best way I know how love for Christ? Is this going to generate, what are the chances that this generates a response that's going to be positive in the economy of the kingdom of God? That every interaction, that that's how we think. That we begin to develop habitual thought patterns. That we begin to, to develop an ear for the Holy Spirit. Where we, and we're changed, and we're, we're moving from a place of saying, I, I, just, I love this person. That's, that's where God wants us to go. And that's what all these applications have to do with. <clears throat> 